At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify reduction in variance, follow the step-by-step -step process of splitting continuous target variable, and appreciate the use of reduction in variance in a decision tree algorithm. In decision tree, it is always very important to understand how to split our nodes. And the splitting will really start from this root going to this part and so on and so forth. In choosing what splitting strategy to use for a certain project, it is always very important to identify what kind of target variable we have. So in our discussion before, we have said that our target variable can be continuous or ordinal. It can be nominal or categorical. So we're going first to start with a continuous target variable. And in this lesson, we're going to identify what kind of splitting strategy we're going to employ for this kind of target variable. And I believe you already know what a continuous variable is. If you don't know yet, I suggest you study our course, Machine Learning Algorithm Essentials, because all the basic foundational concepts and skills can be found in this course. And for you to be able to have a proper understanding of the different algorithms we have been discussing, like decision trees, support vector regression, linear regression, and so on and so forth. In continuous target variable, what we do here is that we split various nodes, and then we calculate the total weighted variance of each split. So we're going to have them one by one later on. In continuous target variable, what we choose is a split that has the minimum variance. And speaking of a minimum variance, the kind of splitting method that we use is a reduction in variance. Just by the term itself, in this case, we use variance to decide what feature on which a certain node is split into child nodes. For easy understanding of these a reduction in variance, this is the same principle we have in statistics actually, which is also variance. And very simple, what we do here is that we just have a summation of the squared of a certain value of x minus the mean. And then of course we get the weighted average. With this calculation, we would be able to identify and understand the homogeneity of a certain node and this kind of homogeneity can be lower it can be higher so which means if the variance is low then we have fewer nodes more or less fewer nodes and of course when we do have a higher value of the variance it means that our node is impure and when the variance is zero it means that we have an absolute homogeneity of our nodes. So maybe at this time you would ask me, what is the meaning of pure and impure? When we say pure, it means that a certain data set contains all the data of the same class. The reverse is true when our data is impure, and it means that we have here different classes. So it has something to do with low purity or high purity, or just pure in itself, which means that the homogeneity is zero. It's very homogeneous. So for better understanding, let's have a certain situation. And for example, our problem in this case is we would like to predict the amount of rain for a certain period of time of a certain year. And so we have two features to use for our prediction. For example, we have temperature. Let's, let's just right here temp. And we have humidity or yum for short. So these two nodes or variables would be our choices for understanding the predicted amount of rain. But the question is, between the two, temperature and humidity, which one can be the best node on which we are going to split? So to answer that, what we will do is we're going to use the technique reduction in variance. The first thing that we do for this reduction in variance is that we're going to individually calculate the variance of each child node. So that means we will compute for the variance of temperature and we will also compute for the variance of humidity. 
So we're going to first to have the split on our temperature. We have, for example, a record of the temperature for 30 days. And out of these 30 days, we have 20 days that are hot. And hot here, we have given a value of 1. And we have 10 days for cold. And the cold is given the value of 0. So in this case, we do have identified the number of days that belong to the class or the daughter node hot which has 18 days of being hot and two days of being cold and so for this child node we have hot two days cold eight days or right, anyway let's go back first here for a while the probability of the days being hot is 0.67 and the probability of being cold is 0.33 and now let's go to here the days which are hot are 20 days all in all. And we do have here out of 20 days, 8 10 of which are hot days and only 2 are cold days. And of course, the probability of hot is 0.9 and the probability of cold is 0.1. And this time, we're going to compute for the mean of this node. And if we are going to do the calculation, the mean would be... 0.9. Now we're going to get the variance. To get the variance, what we did here is, of course, we use this formula. And based on our calculation, we could get the variance of 0.09. I would like you to check this one on your own. And please write the comment in the comment section if you do have some questions or if you could like or if you want to say something about this calculation. And for this child node, we also do the same thing, the same process we follow as in this case. So for this child node, we have a total of 10 days. And out of these 10 days, we have two days which are hot and we have eight days which are cold. And the probability of having hot days is 0.2, while that of cold days is 0.8. And computing the mean for this child node we could get 0.2 and the variance is 0.16. And maybe you would like to ask me, why is it that we have here cold, despite the fact that this one is hot, and we also have here hot, despite the fact that this child node is cold. The reason for this identification would be that we are not perfect. There will always be some kind of mistake in our identification, which of these values here can be considered hot or can be considered cold. So that's why we have the term pure and impure. But of course, when we have identified the days which are hot perfectly and the days which are cold perfectly, then the hot here would be 20 and then cold here is zero. And the same case is observed in this case. So it can be 10 days for cold and zero for hot now after calculating the variance of each node what we will do is that we're going to calculate the weighted average of the variance of these child nodes and to do that we have this one so first we get the 20 divided by 30 it's because we have 20 days for the hot and all in all, we do have here 30 days, and then we multiply that to the value of the variance of this particular node, and we do the same in this case, and then we add the respective results, and then we get 0.11. So the variance for the temperature is 0.11. The temperature node is done. Now we will go to the humidity node. And of course, we do the same process of computing for the variance of each child node or this parent node, which is humidity. And again, we have 30 days. And out of 30 days, 16 days have high humidity and 14 days have low humidity. And one here also represents high humidity and zero represents low humidity. So the probability of having high humidity is 0.53. And the probability of having low humidity is 0.47.
And then we have classified the days into high or low. And these are the different numbers for the high. And these are the different numbers for the low node. So the mean we have here is 0.75. And of course, the variance is 0.19. And in this case, for the daughter low humidity, we have only 14 days. And the probability of having high humidity is 0.29. And the probability of having low humidity is 0.71. The mean is 0.29 and the variance is 0.20. So after identifying the variance of each child node, we are now going to get the weighted variance of the child nodes. And to do that, we still follow, of course, the same process of calculation. And we get, of course, 0.19. After identifying the variance of each node which is humidity and temperature it's now time to compare the results of these variances so we have temperature 0.11 and humidity is 0.19 and our rule is that we are going to choose the node which has the lowest value of the variance and in this case temperature has a lower value in comparison to humidity which is 0.19 so it means that in splitting we are going to use temperature node and maybe you would want to ask me why is it that we we use 0.11 instead of 0.19 the reason for this is that this shows more purity than 0.19 of humidity or in other words we can also say that more purity would also mean more homogeneous. Let me write here, homogeneous. What is this for? Why do we have to study this? Basically, this process of splitting can help us identify which node or feature is scientifically reasonable for splitting. After all being said and done, let's try this. What is reduction in variance? How do we identify which node to split? using reduction in variance. Please write your answers in the comment down below so that we would be able to have a very rich interaction of ideas and we can learn from each other. Do you want to know more about this channel? Just click these cards. We do have a lot of free data science courses for free like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.